Hello, beautiful divine souls. Welcome to Goddess Unleash or Goddess Rebirth, the space where we dive deep into the heart of womanhood, unraveling mysteries and celebrating the beauty and empowering our listeners with knowledge and understanding. I'm so honored to have a beautiful divine soul with me. I am here with Micaela de la Mico. Micaela is not only a mother, she's an educator. She's a folk herbalist, a community organizer. Her life's work revolves around nurturing and educating, focusing on the natural cycles of our bodies and the earth. Micaela, welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for your time. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who's Micaela? What do you do? And how is your work impacting the world? Um, so as you mentioned, um, I assume the role is mother. I'm a mother to a four-year-old. I'm a community organizer, which means when the needs of the community arise, I act. Um, I move yeah, folks into action when it's needed. I serve um, cycling people. So that means um, supporting through education the needs of the womb in all of its forms from its fertile phase to its luteal phase, um, education while bleeding, how to navigate the needs of pregnancy, breastfeeding and postpartum, especially as women and mothers and birthing people integrate sacred earth medicine um, or entheogens um, or just plants in general. And I'm extremely passionate about supporting folks in um, reconnecting with the cycle of their hormonal system, their spiritual body as it relates to the lunar phases, and to really learn to love and cultivate a kind relationship with our womb. That is so beautiful. And that's why I was attracted to your work. And I was fascinated by the way that you're so connected to, to your body. I want to ask you, how can younger girls understand their cycles better? And how can they feel empowered? by it yeah i think it really comes down to some pretty basic understandings about what the nature of menstruation is and one myth i think that must be dispelled for young people and people of all ages is one that is commonly misunderstood about menstrual blood um, there is a stigma around menstruation in general as being dirty or filthy or um, more specifically considered waste material. Um, and I think people need to maybe receive the reframe that menstrual blood is not waste material in the body. Instead, it is the shedding of a very healthy, vibrant, and nutrient-rich lining that is no longer needed. And so um, this isn't the accumulation of waste product that must leave the body in order for well-being to occur, but part of a natural cycle of growth and release. So um, I would love young people to um, consider where they learned the way that they feel about menstrual blood. That is one of the biggest questions I like to ask young people is, who taught you to feel a certain way? What did they teach you? And is that rooted in anything real? Or is that superstition or myth or indoctrinated beliefs? Um, because as we've learned through science and through indigenous worldviews and understandings that menstrual blood is 
really beneficial for um, feeding plants, feeding soil, um, moisturizing the skin, um, healing illnesses like acne, and um, does not need to be feared. So it would be really wonderful to teach young people to love their moon, um, to love their blood that comes out of their body and to treat the body kindly, even when it is bleeding. And I would really love for young people to know how to care for things like PMS and irregular periods and painful periods um, without pharmaceutical drugs, but instead with plants and herbs that are really efficient at helping us um, support these body systems. I love, I love the way that you said it and just questioning our own beliefs. Where are they rooted? Where do they come from? That's such a beautiful question. That's such a beautiful invitation to, for reflection and, and the embracing of the beauty of our own body. Unfortunately, so many of us, at least I grew up as a, as a teenager, but I experienced so much pain during my periods. Every time it was, uh, it was terrifying. And my only option was medicine or, or pills. And I, I didn't know anyone who was doing any other way. So can you introduce us a little bit into why is that we're struggling with pain? Do you have a personal story that you also experience pain and then you heal yourself? Yeah, I think um, something foundational that I learned um, as I was being instructed around the womb is a very simple way of looking and understanding what's called the inner seasons model. And so I want to just paint a picture for your audience. If they have not heard about the internal seasons model before, um, it is a way of relating the menstrual cycle to the seasons of the earth. So um, what a young person might look at in you know the world outside is a a lush and vibrant springtime and that springtime is like teeming with life and the potential for for fruit and flower and things are just very rosy and 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 vibrant right um this relates to our pre-ovulatory phase so pre-ovulatory phase um, is marked by a symphony of hormones that are meant to increase viability and, um, and our pro-gestation. So essentially, they in increase our fertility and increase the likelihood and encourage ovulation to occur. And so um, that's like a nice analogy for looking at the internal body in pre-ovulatory phase. It's very much like springtime, right? The potential for the blossoming of life. Um, we have summer, which relates to our ovulatory phase. And I know that this is maybe review for some people, but I was astonished as a young person that like it had never been explained to me so simply. And summer, there is an increase in heat, during ovulation, there is increase in body temperature. So we have also a, a rising of very important hormones like estrogen and progesterone and luteinizing hormone. Um, and when that peak kinds of comes to a crescendo, then an egg is released. And when the egg is released, it releases also progesterone, which supports the body um, in, in ensuring that the egg is ripe for the taking, right? And if a sperm does not meet this egg, then it begins a dissension process. So water starts to leave the body, progesterone and estrogen begin to drop, and we are in our autumn time or our fall which is wonderful because we look at these autumn leaves, they're falling, 
Um, the weather is changing, things are cooling down, and also um, our vitality, like that life force energy that was like sparkling in the spring and summer is now starting to dim. And people tend to really struggle during this period because it's um, instead of a quickening, it's like a, a slowdown. And I feel like people get more irritable at this time. People require more spaciousness. Um, there's crabbiness, like the glow is leaving your face. Your body will start to change. Maybe you'll break out um, with acne. And this is our premenstrual period. And it's a, it's a part in our cycle that I feel like we collectively as a human race deserve to learn how to love. This is our luteal phase. And um, this is the phase I'm presently in, as I'm sharing with you now, I'm presently in my luteal phase. And that's marked by a completely different set of needs than the body that is in its pre-ovulatory phase or ovulatory phase. And following our um, luteal phase, then we drop into our, our menstrual phase, which is considered an inner winter. And we look at leaves, we look at trees and all the leaves are gone. Things are looking quite barren, like things are, are dying in a way. And, and the body needs that. The body requires cycles to function. It's important that we have rest. It's important that we have time to create spaciousness for sleep, for hibernation, right? All those things that come in winter, the sequestering of nutrients in our body. So these, these cycles, and it goes on and on like that, like a big circle. Um, and it's, and it's endless, which is really special. And um, I find that we really want to, um, in the West, and also all over the world, really, um, there, there is like a fear, I think, that comes with um, the, 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 the range of emotion that comes in a person's entire cycle. And what's so interesting is that the hormonal fluctuations that a person in a, in a female body will experience happens more dramatically in a single month than a person in a male body will experience in an entire year. So we are, in fact, different people in different weeks of the month, which is, it feels true for some people. We are thinking very differently. We are feeling differently in different times of the month. And it's because we are vastly different people than we were even a few weeks ago. And that is the changing woman archetype that we get in a lot of indigenous teachings is this is the being that we are we live cycles inside of cycles which is really special and unique to the kind of experience that we get to have and um as a person who grew up without this kind of education and was put on hormonal birth control at age 11 which is very young to be taking pharmaceutical medications that often to stop the ovulatory cycle. Um, I found, I, I was trying to find peace in my cycles. And as an early teen, 11, 12, 13, my cycles were just beginning. My cycles were just coming online. And so I feel that my younger me deserved the opportunity to, to, to drop in to those cycles, to give my body enough time to adjust. I was not given um, a formal ceremony coming into my first bleeding time. And I feel like that makes a big difference in the way that I viewed my body and what I understood, literally, how literate I was in what was occurring within my own body. And I feel like if someone would have just taught me an internal seasons model, I might have had a grasp for 
well, like maybe I should learn this rhythm. Maybe there is a pattern that I can invite myself to engage in. So the younger me had extremely painful periods. They were very irregular and I was keeled over in a lot of pain in those first cycles of my life. But the only response that Western medicine offered me was hormonal birth control. So I was on hormonal birth control from age 11 until I was almost age 20. So almost 10 years of my adolescent life was spent on synthetic hormones. And it wasn't until I was in my 20s that I actually felt called to learn and study the womb that I had in my body the entire time. I do feel like all the young girls in this area of the world, what they receive as education at school is very disempowering. And, and it's also kind of like not in accordance to the way that you explain it, how our bodies work in a cycle, just like nature, just like Mother Earth. I don't feel like we learned that at school. And I, I really like something that you mentioned that I want to, I want to ask you more about that. Are there any specific rituals or celebrations that honor the menstrual cycle and how can they transform our experience of menstruation? Is it specific to um, certain cultures or countries? What do you think about that? So um, the ritual that some people follow when a girl is coming into their bleeding body is called menarche. And menarche is just one language's way of describing that ritual that you're talking about, that initiatory process into you are now a changing woman, you are now coming into your bleeding time. And that looks really different for cultures all over the world. But something that I will say is that those rituals are in place for a reason and also um, are maintained by some traditions and some children get to experience these. And a lot of modern people are starting to reclaim these rituals and, and traditions. So what I was taught in my Yoni steaming tradition as part of a menarche ceremony is that a young girl who's coming into their moon time is instructed about the anatomical and physiological nature of their womb. So not only is it a symbolic gesture of them changing, but now they can be bestowed onto them the information of what it is to have a womb in your body and um, what that means as far as how do you take care of your womb? What practices, physical practices, do you participate in now in order to caretake for your womb, whether that's yoni steaming or the use of maybe a faha. So a faha is a very special long scarf that's tied around not the waist, but around the hips to support the womb and pull it upright. Um, so the use of a faha or um, even it's the old uh, abuela way of telling the girls you always should wear socks like you should never let your feet touch the ground without socks on so these these tiny nuances of how to care for this body that you're in is very an important part of these menarche rituals and also in the way that i learned was that the young girl's feet would be um, bathed in milk and flowers. So they would have a ritual foot bath and then their hair would be washed with flower water. And all of the aunties and the moms and um, all the grandmothers would all come together and share their wisdom with the girl over the course of that day or sometimes even several days. So it's, um, it's something a lot of people don't get to experience. I definitely didn't get to experience it, but I I find that um, 
these these rites of passage for young people are really important and we deserve to have them in some way and a lot of my friends kids <laughs> they're not interested which is kind of funny like a lot of my friends that have come around to the sacredness of the womb want to bring their daughters into it and they'll say hey we want to have a special ritual for you you know can we do this and sometimes the daughters are like i'm not that interested in that or like maybe i want it a different way and i think what's so special about this day is that children have a lot more agency than ever before um and i and i honor that because if i had a choice i would not be on hormonal birth control at 11 but i didn't get a choice so um those are those are some things that we negotiate with young people is do you think this is important and how much of it do you want to know and maybe when you feel ready you can come to me at any time to learn and that's very very important that at least children and young people deserve people in their lives that are willing to educate them in these ways especially since they won't ever get them in school at least not in this way i really really appreciate having you as a role model for girls younger girls and even older women because i feel like with social media nowadays all the role models we have are women that never stop women that run 24 7 and they do everything and that i don't know how that can be done and i don't feel like that should be our expectation but i do see how younger girls they want to they want to be that they want to be that thing they see on social media they want to be popular they want to feel beautiful because they are all beautiful but they want to feel it so my last question for you how can embracing our menstruation or our and having this this sacred connection with our body how can that help me feel successful feel popular perhaps if that is part of it feel beautiful feel grateful for being a woman mm. embracing um all aspects of ourself and integrating all aspects of ourself i think is an important part of how we learn to feel beautiful and that self image that we have is delicate right it's so dependent on what we see in the world and that's what really draws me to want to create what i do and how i do because i want young women to know that as you're changing cycle after cycle in this new body and then this old body in the frumpy thick chunky body of the luteal phase and the bright shiny ovulation body that we sometimes get to enjoy from time to time you are um you are a radiant child of the earth and the plants don't care what you look like today as long as you continue to sing to them and the soil doesn't care what you look like today as long as you continue to keep your hands in it you know it's really interesting what standard of beauty we're all operating under because what one person's perspective of beauty is is not another culture's perspective of beauty and i grew up feeling too big feeling too thick feeling too brown feeling too curly um, to be considered beautiful but it wasn't until i started spending time in spaces with other people that looked and felt embodied and looked and felt like me that i understood 
that my beauty was being compared to a beauty standard that's unattainable, inauthentic, and not made for me. So I'm really grateful in ways, actually, that social media can represent what the vast the the vast scope of what humans can be and what humans can look like and i really want to encourage young people and creators alike to create content and to create art that embodies the not so perfect parts of who we are because they're equally beautiful equally valuable and i feel like permissions other people to see and understand that you don't need to be looking like a fucking 10 all day every day that you sleepy and frumpy and tired is just as valuable as you bright and shiny so i hope that people through this conversation can maybe imagine what it would be like to accept themselves in all the forms they come in each and every day um, because those forms are valuable and nature is beautiful and nature is kind of frumpy too and it's okay to not look like what a magazine wants you to look like because the person in the magazine doesn't even look like what's what image that there is of them now so um i'm here for real beauty you know i'm i'm really here for people that just look like human beings and not mannequins and fake you know um like look in ways that trap them in ovulation phase. A lot of the beauty standards that we exist on want to make people look like they're ovulating all the time and are not honoring the other phases of the moon of the seasons that our body wants to be in. So to the to the range of beauty and to the range of you because it's deserving enough i i really 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 appreciate what you just shared that's so important that needs to go to every corner of the world knowing that something that is sustainable is being authentic if i'm trying to be someone else that i don't even know i will never be able to sustain that no matter how hard I try. Michaela, thank you for your time, your wisdom. Thank you for being you, for the work you're doing and for shining. Is there any last piece of advice or word of wisdom that you would like to share with our audience? For every illness in the body, there is a plant. And I hope that people get really curious about what plants and what fungi and what animal medicines there are in the world um, to address the needs of their body. And I really do feel that the products um, that we put on our skin, um, on our hair, make a huge impact in our health. And so consider um, reading the label and seeing what is going into your body because your womb is just communicating to you um, what it's picking up from your environment. And um, if you can find um, reusable menstrual products in this world, um, that can be really gentle to your body and also really gentle to the planet um, because the earth is one big womb and we don't want to trash it either. Thank you so much for 
all of that thank you so much also for joining us on this journey today and i wish that every woman stepping boldly into her womanhood um, can embrace every cycle honor their body and cherish this incredible journey of being a woman Michaela, thank you again you have a good night thank you i am thrilled to have you in my circle and i am buzzing with excitement to conjure up some magic together remember in goddess unleash we don't just talk the talk we walk the mystical walk tune in and transform with me until next time keep your spirits high and your magic untamed